Green summer fair and winter draw near. My Lord, in your presence I live without fear. Tempest through snows, through turbulent tide. The touch of your hand is my strength and my guide. I ask for no riches that death can destroy. I crave only Thee, Your love and Your joy. I ask for no riches that death can destroy. I crave only Thee, Your love and Your joy. Dancers will pass, the singing must end. I welcome the darkness with you for my friend. The Summer fade and winter draw near. My Lord, in your presence I live without fear. Through tempest, through snows, through turbulence. Of your hand is my strength and my guide. I ask for no riches that death can destroy. I crave only thee. Your love and your joy. I ask for no riches that death can destroy. I crave only thee, your love and your joy. The dancers will pass, the singing must end. I welcome the darkness with you for my friend. You know, when William the Conqueror landed in England, his destiny, God-given, was to conquer England. But the first thing he did, it was a muddy day, and he slipped and fell in the sand, in the mud, and this gasp went over the whole army. Oh my God, what a bad omen. <coughs> well, William was a man of great willpower, and he leapt to his feet with his hands full of earth, he said, I'm so determined to conquer this country, I've filled my hands with it. And this great cheer went up all over the army. And he went on to the Battle of Hastings and won it that day. But he wouldn't have won it if he said, oh my God, a bad omen. How many people, they read the horoscope and they say that you're going to have a little hard time today, better stay home. Oh, oh I didn't eat my avocado today, my spine feels weak or some reason you go to an astrologer and he tells you don't do this because uh, the auspices are bad 
You don't have to worry about those things. Your real guidance and your real strength come from inside yourself. Be strong in yourself. And every time you fail, and my God, how many times we do fail, if you just sit, just say, get up. I know what I want in life. I know where I'm going. Why should I waste incarnations looking for it? I want it now. You will see that God will forgive you. Yes, you may have to be punished a little bit. Who cares? What's a few years? Life is so short. Oh, I've been beaten so many times. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. It becomes fun after a while. You know, his love is always there. He, you, no one can take that love away from you. I eat persecution for breakfast. Sprinkle it on my cereal. Because I know that He's there. His love, my Guru's love. Good morning again, everybody. I like to start I'm reading from this book, Awaken, How to Awaken Your True Potential from the Wisdom, Wisdom Series, Paramahansa Yogananda on Fear. Fear is a mental poison. Fear intensifies and magnifies our physical pain and mental agonies a hundredfold. Fear is destructive to the heart, nervous system, and brain. It is destructive to mental initiative, courage, judgment, common sense, and willpower. Fear shrouds the soul's all-conquering confidence and power. When something is threatening you, do not sit idle. Do something about it, calmly mustering all the power of your will and judgment. If you are unable to dislodge the haunting fear of failure or ill health, divert your mind by turning your attention to interesting, absorbing books or even the harmless to harmless amusements. After the mind forgets its haunting fear, encourage it to discover and root out the causes of failure and ill health in the soil of your daily life. Do not fear disease or accidents if you had had them once. On the other hand, fearlessness will, in all probability, avert them or at least minimize their power. This is a vitally important topic to disciples, devotees, truth seekers, to everybody. There are so many fears that people carry around with them from one life to the other, and they affect them in this life, and they carry them on to the next life. I was remembering a story of Swami Sri Teswarji, who was certainly fearless, all of our masters were, and he, his mother, when he was young, said there's a ghost in the closet, and he said he went immediately to the closet, and he didn't find a ghost. And his, one of his great statements was, uh, fit, look fear in the face and it will cease to trouble you. And I think that's the thing we have to remember. There, there's all kinds of fears you can have. You have fear of walking across the street, fear of driving a car, fear of any accident, fear of any ch mental problem, fear of any physical ailment, fear of somebody dying in the family, fear of losing your your spouse, your loved one, fear of some financial disaster. I mean, there's just a gazillion fears that people can have and do have every day. And it just weakens and weakens and weakens. Not only your spiritual energy, it weakens your attunement. It weakens your connection with the divine. And I've seen people go through at Ananda, many, many challenges on all levels over the past four and a half decades. You would think that nobody has any challenges. They're all happy and joyful and nothing ever happens. I've seen so many things happen. I remember one year, seven of my friends died from various things. But what I noticed was that the people who had those challenges in the beginning, or during or near the end, they realized that God was with them. And what, what's more important than that? I remember hearing Swamiji say that 
Master said the disciples will be protected. He said this in India as well, in the very beginning of our work here. I remember everyone felt so happy, you know, the disciples will be protected. But then he added, even if you die, he's still protecting you. And you have to think about that. You know, nothing's ever going to happen because master is protecting me. Also, he said that our, our lives are in master's hands. Our life and our death are in master's hands. And we have to realize that divine mother is with us, no matter if we're healthy, if we're not healthy, if we feel good, if we don't feel good, if we are in the brinks of leaving our body or there's so many things that can happen, but fear doesn't help when we can put our hand in divine mother's hand and know that she's there, then I find that the fear goes away. Master said at one point he had, he went through an experience where he had a vision of being in his Calcutta meditation room, Burgar Parud, meditating, doing Kriya. And then suddenly he was in the body, shifted into a body of a captain of a ship. And the ship was going down, there was a battle and he was struck by a bullet. And he said, and I realized, oh my, I'm dying. Oh, I'm dead. And then he said, well, that's interesting, I'm dead. And then suddenly he was put back in the body, meditating, doing Kriya in his home. And he says, oh, I'm not dead. How nice, I'm not dead. And then he was, he said, translated. It was translated back into the body of the sailor, the captain, and the dead body. Oh, now I'm dead. Then he went back and forth a few times. And then he said, he said, I was confused. And he said, I asked, I saw this light and I asked that light, sire, light, am I dead on the battlefield? Or am I alive sitting on my bed, meditating in Calcutta? And he said, the response came so strongly to him. Neither, you don't either. You're the light that's created the whole drama. You're not dead on the battlefield and you're not alive. And I think we have to realize that this life is a drama. It's a Leela. It's a play. We're playing our parts as best as we can. We have karma to work out and you can't run away from that. But fear doesn't help you to conquer. Fear weakens you. We have to become conquerors of every fear, of every doubt, of every worry, because our hand is in our master's hand. Our gurus, all of them are around us, helping us, protecting us. They can't help you and protect you if you're weakened all the time. Help, help. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything. And I was remembering some wonderful stories of master helping the devotees. There was one where he was in a, a ship. This is must have been, he, well, yeah, when he came back in 1935. And um, there was a boat and it was overly crowded. I don't know which river exactly he was on, but um, this boat started sinking and all the passengers were afraid and they, they saw he was a spiritual person. They all ran to him, holy man, holy man, save us, save us. And he said, I can't save you. This is the point. People think, oh, it's just guru, guru. He said, I can't save you. Pray to God. Pray. Get an attunement with God, with the light. God can save you. And everybody began to pray instead of running around. And then this, the ship, the boat started coming back up and they didn't sink. And they, oh, holy man, you saved us. He said, I didn't save you. God saved you. <laughs> we have to be in attunement with that power of God. Yes, is coming through the guru. Yes, is coming through our practices. Yes, is coming through the meditation. We have to stay in attunement. And I see people get out of attunement, all kinds of things happen to them because you're attracting like is attracting like. You're attracting what, what you are. You're fearful all the time. Things will happen that make you more fearful. If you're strong in yourself, you, you'll be strong. And karma will come, but it won't knock you down. It may tap you. It may touch you a little bit, but it won't destroy you. 
there are many other stories of God's power through the guru we, who helped them. I remember a wonderful fellow, maybe they're watching, uh, Akash uh, and his family. He was a member in Gurgaon. Now they live in Canada. And they were going they went from Gurgaon into Delhi. They're going somewhere here and they parked their car. He had a car protector with a picture of Master on one side, picture of Babaji on the other. So he parked the car. They took the family out. They were walking somewhere. And as soon as they got out of the car, they looked back and a big bus came in just, <clears throat> just demolished the car. And he said, I realized that car protector, that Master was protecting us. He got us out of the car. Of course, you had to get a new car and all that, but that's the lesser of the karma. And they went away unscathed. And a story of Norman and the flatbed truck, you heard he was driving down the hill of Mount Washington, the brakes went out, and he called out, Master, is this what you want? And then God's power came and stopped that car. There are many wonderful stories. I think if you still start feeling fearful and worried and just open up the new path or autobiography of a yogi and uh you'll find many things i found another one i want to tell you that um it's a bit hilarious so this man was he was a disciple and he master master told the disciples don't hitchhike because it's dangerous you don't know whose car you're going to get into so this fellow never quite followed the rules. And so one time he was in a car with somebody. He had picked up somebody, the first one, and um, a hitchhiker. And he was driving along. And suddenly this man, who was a hitchhiker, had a knife. He was about to stab him. And the driver could hear Master's voice saying, he's got a knife. <laughs> the guy turned around, the guy had a knife. And he said, put that knife down. And he opened the door, got the guy out of the car. And another time there was, he, he was hitchhiking, or uh, one of the other monks, I can't remember. And, and uh, the, he was driven to this place where he was way off of where he wanted to go. And uh, he just thought, where, where are they taking me? So finally they, they dragged him out of the car and they took him over to the house and they were knocking, knocking, knocking at the door and they were going to have him. He was going to be a, a used as some in some robbery or something. Nobody came to the door, so they just told him to get out. So when he got back to Master Masters, I told you not to hitchhike. And he said, I had to close all the ears of the people in the house just so they wouldn't answer that door. And he said, don't hitchhike anymore. And so of course, God and gurus are there, but how, what can we do is the question. First, don't take risky, don't do risky things. Things that you're not able to do, things that you're not trained to do. Um, just don't put yourself in, use common sense. Don't put yourself in a disastrous or risky situation. There's enough risky situations without putting yourself in another one. Um, and the other thing is keep yourself healthy. God can help you if you, you eat everything and you know, all the sweets every day and your teeth are falling out and, you know, all of this, you just work on, work with Divine Mother. Uh, now I'm afraid I have to have a surgery. Well, what happened? You know, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, if it's one of those that you couldn't avoid, fine, but a lot you can avoid if you just take care of yourself and exercise and eat properly. Um, here's another one. When I was growing up, my I grew up with two brothers and they were, uh, they were fierce, you know, I mean, our whole family was, but they would, you know, when our parents were gone, they would say, no, we're going to watch a horror movie. And I said, I don't watch a horror. No, we're going to watch a horror movie. So they would put on some horror, horror film, everybody screaming and, you know, and today we don't so much have a horror movie, but don't watch things that make you fearful. Don't put on a video and you know you're going to be afraid later or in a bad dream or a nightmare. Or, and don't, you know, be careful with the news you watch. Don't just watch something, somebody's shooting somebody. And, you know, this, it's not, it's not our world. We're traveling through. Don't put yourself in a situation where it's in your mind all the time. And that's just more and more fear is growing. 
other things we can do, pray to God and gurus. Anytime you're in a disastrous situation, I remember being on a plane and it, it, there was a lot of turbulence up and down, up and down, up and and the plane got very quiet. And I just closed my eyes and I just kept chanting, Om Guru, Om Guru, Om Guru. And I thought I could die today, but my hand is in, this, is hit in his. And so if something's happening, go inside. Don't go screaming around the house and calling up people. Go inside. Anything could happen any day. But where, where is your consciousness? Keep your sadhana going. Keep strong. Keep focused here. Uh, that could be something anytime. But keep your energy in God. Do the practices to keep strong. Om Tat Sat, you can do. I've shown that before. I can't stand up and do it now, but the hands forward and the hands back, touching, chanting Om Tat Sat or just Om. Uh, it's a protection around you. The best protection is really doing more Kriya. Do more Kriya. When you're feeling it's a, a time in your life when it's hard, it's challenges, do more Kriya. It will really get you more strong in yourself. Carry a picture of the guru or the masters around with you. Have a travel altar. If you're traveling out, have your mala, your mala with you. Wear it at times when you feel particularly uh, vulnerable. Um, be with other strong guru bhais. Don't spend a lot of time with people who are just always fearful about everything. And uh, I remember Swamiji used to tell us this story. He said there was a disciple of one guru who always was fearful. What if this happens? And, and the guru would say, well, then maybe that you can do that. Well, what if this happens? Well, maybe you can do that. Well, what if that happens? And he, the disciple would go on and on. And, and uh, they just have worry, one worry and one fear. The, the guru couldn't help them anymore. But what if I die? And he said, well, I mean, we, that may happen. And it did happen. <laughs> and so even when that moment comes, just be, be strong in yourself. I mean, I, I've seen people just leave the body in the most joyful ways with all the friends around, chanting on the, with the harmonium. And I remember one devotee here, they said, I'm not afraid anymore. Swamiji is here. Swamiji is with me. I knew somebody else who said, I'm not dying anymore because I see master now, I'm seeing him. So whatever is happening, just, uh, the fear comes from the lack of attunement with God and gurus. And I like to end with this uh, affirmation. If you can do it with me. <clears throat> God is within and all around me. Say it out loud, protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out his guiding light. God is within and all around me, protecting me. He's protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out his guiding light. God is within and all around me, protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out his guiding light. God is within and all around me, protecting me. He's protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out this guiding light. God is within and all around me. Protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out his guiding light. Say it mentally now, God is within and all around me. Protecting me. So I will banish the fear that shuts out this guiding light. This is from this book, Metaphysical Meditations.
Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I'll ask Natendra to join on screen now. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Danaji. And we have a list of questions. <clears throat> First one, I can ask because nobody's around. <laughs> My movement <laughs> is not very uplifting at home. It's noisy and there are a lot of people. So I don't feel that uplifted. There's not a good vibration. So what can I do in such situations? You can't really blame others, can you? They're at the level that they're at. And we have to have compassion for them. <clears throat> but you can't go into their aura of worry and fear. So you have to keep your own practices strong and spend more time with guru bhais. You have to balance out your time. You can't be you know, 90% in an environment that's not uplifting and 10%. I tell people a lot, get to the satsang. And online is only one part of it. I mean, you have to get in the room. I was just in Bangalore. Whoa, we had such a wonderful time meditating together, having meals together, talking spiritual truths together. I thought, how many environments can you go in when you can have a spiritual conversation like that? You know, I talk with people oh, I, not on the path and they just look at me like I'm crazy. So you got to be with, you got to put yourself in the aura of master. And people make a dozen excuses. But get to the satsang, go to the center, go to Kriya, for God's sake, go to every Kriya that's possible, that's near, near you. I've been to hundreds of Kriyas. Go to the meditations, go to the guided Kriya meditations. You have to, you have to work at it. I'm not going to make this easy. I, it's not me. It's not easy. You have to put yourself in the proper environment. And then the other environment, it's okay, yeah, you know? But if you're always there, oh yeah, sit down and watch three more movies with everybody, you don't have to watch three movies. Excuse yourself. Go in your meditation room. And in the morning, for God's sake, get up earlier if you can't, if you can't meditate when others are up. Just get up and do it. So Master said, this path may not be easy, but the worldly path is much more difficult. <laughs> you keep that in mind. It's much more difficult. Okay, you have other questions? Yeah? Yeah, there's a live question. As we have healing techniques for others where we can help them heal, do we have any ways to help others overcome their fears as well? I think the same thing, the healing prayers. Yeah, and I would offer people something, your friends, your relatives, offer something, either a book, you know, just buy them a book or tell them about it, um, a mala or coming to the satsang, come to a talk, something, give them, a, send them an affirmation or give them an affirmation or a photo or something i was with some friends yesterday and um one fellow who just got a graduated from college and got a job and you know i thought i want to give him a gift now you can get a shirt or some i don't know but what did i i said the guy needs a mala <laughs> i'm gonna give him something spiritual to help him so help people you know, with a kind word and all that, but give something that can help them and pray for them. Thank you, Nanaji. We have another live question. A lot of times people lie out of fear and that breaks the trust. So how can we overcome the lying that comes out of fear? That lying isn't going to help you. You just get into more and more lies then at a certain point you get caught so it just doesn't it doesn't work we know it doesn't work so i think you just have to come out of it and then you're afraid that somebody's going to catch you on the lie and they usually do 
So these are things you have to break on your own, you know, um, it just doesn't work. So you'll have to figure that out, but it, we know it doesn't work. So you can just, um, you know, I think this is a good question because a lot of fear comes around things that people do that they know they shouldn't do. Then they're worried and they're fearful about that. Like a child, if the parents say don't do that and the child does it, the, the kid is afraid, the parents gotta find out and they do find out. So I would say clean up your life. It may take a long time, but just little by little, just get clean, clean everything up. And you'll find that the fear is just, there won't be there nearly as much. That's all I can say about that. Thank you, Namji. We are up on time, but just a final question. Mm. I'm afraid something may go wrong with my health. And maybe some relatives or friends have health challenges. So what should I do? You know, as you get older, <laughs> then people do think, oh, this is going to happen. Oh, and my knees are hurting out and my neck is out and my, my feet hurt. And, you know, you think it's a downhill slide. But Master said, keep the body fit for self-realization. Now, here's a good example, Jyotishji. He's 80 next month in August. Who do you know that's 80 that looks like that? That much energy traveling around the world. Who do you know? Now why? He's kept his body fit. He eats properly, has fasting days, exercises, has good thoughts. You know, that's the, that's the trend I'm looking at. You know, you do. I'm getting up there in age, but I don't feel it. I eat right. I exercise, I'm going swimming after this. You know, it's like, you have to work at it. Here's the other thing. You can't just say, oh my God, I'm getting old now and something's gonna happen. It will happen if you don't work on yourself. So start when you're young. I know you're in good shape, Natendra, and I urge people, if people eat all kinds of things and don't them sit on the couch for my exercise. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't work. When you're sitting on the couch, you're not exercising. Let me just say that unless you've got some barbells or something that you're lifting, but it's just a joke. So um, pause, your body is not going to be your friend if you don't work with it properly. Start today and eat right and exercise and you'll feel better. And that fear of, you know, I, I'll end with this. That one, at years back, I went, I had a doctor's appointment and they said, your cholesterol is a little high. And so, you know, if, if you don't get this down, you're, you're going to have to be on proper med medicine for the rest of your life. I said, oh, forget it. I said, give me three months. Three months, I did more exercise. I changed my diet. And I went back in three months. They said, fantastic. So you can change these things too. If you catch it soon enough, now I have no cholesterol problem. So you can work at it. Okay, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Natendra. Bye.